Jay Warner here talking about the Barry Bot. A lot of times I'm building something and then after the fact I think, oh man, I should have uh, videotaped this to show uh, some of my buddies. And uh, this time I kind of remembered beforehand. So we're going to take a look at, um, I just machined up a bunch of, uh, this is the new idea of using dimples for the end effector. And um, we're gonna, I got it pretty much all set up to epoxy it. So let's, uh, I'll bring you in here and show you how I do it. All right, I'm pretty much set up here. Um, I've got an icing bag. Uh, these are used a lot for um, in baking uh, or uh, decorating cakes and whatnot with frosting. They make excellent uh, little devices for working with epoxy. I got a, some JB Weld Quick here, and uh, we'll just go ahead and mix up a, a batch of this to epoxy all these balls in. I always tend to overkill it. I don't. They're all on there and they're snapped in. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and let it sit, <clears throat> let it cure up. And as it's curing, what I like to do is uh, after about um, a couple minutes, this JB Weld goes off pretty quick. Uh, the quick goes off pretty fast and in probably about two minutes, it'll start hardening. I have this, these are some of my favorite little tools right here. What I do is I can go around and I can, while it's still in a semi-soft state, go ahead and just clean up the balls a little bit. Um, also, another good thing, because this being magnetic, you can take a toothpick and just make it to a sharp point and get, clean up a little bit of the, the excess and then pull the tape off and really do a good job. Anyways, this thing was really easy to make. And um, I'll go ahead and I'll show you what I got in the way of a dimple die to do this. Um, 
I used it in a pneumatic squeeze I used for building an airplane, but um, I think you could uh, just trim off uh, the studs on it and use it just in a regular bench vise. So that's the reason I'll show you. I know everybody doesn't, it's not going to have a uh, hydraulic um, pre, um, squeeze. So, anyways, we'll do that here in another video. Well guys, I got it all cleaned up and uh, gotta say it looks really good. Um, that dimpling is the way to go. Now, um, you know, this is a granite block and so you can see it's just really nice. Um, I think the tolerances on this are really, really much better than my other one. But um, I'm going to make quite a few of these because I want to have them for different colors so I can just pop them on and off. And also using PLA and ABS, uh, it'll make it really super easy. So, you know, the only thing I did on this, uh, you can see even the backside looks kind of nice. Um, this is the JB weld that I just had a piece of aluminum tape. So they're slightly a little bit concaved, uh, but what it does is that dimple forms a key. So basically, the epoxy uh, bonds to the ball, but it's also keyed more or less in the back of the dimple with that um, JB weld. And what I did is I just went in with this little round, um, this little tiny round uh, carbide, and just go in there and uh, and give it a little grind. You want to, this isn't that as critical. I also did the top side and on the top side uh, you don't want to take much off. You just want to scuff it so it's got a good bite but you don't want to remove too much material because you could get them uneven. Um, but yeah, look at that. That's really neat. So I'm going to make quite a few of these and then uh, just have different colors and uh, different material. It'll make it super easy. Anyways, I'll show you some of the, I'll show you the dimple and whatnot. Warner with the Berry Bot here again. Uh, just wanted to show you how I went ahead and fixtured to get this precision in my uh, finger brake. Um, I know a lot of you won't have this, but some of you do, and so you might be able to utilize some of these ideas. Um, this is just a parallel, um, a precision parallel that I got clamped on here. What I did is I lined up this edge right here with the edge of the finger here. And it's pulled back about 3 16 from the actual uh, uh, break point. And I just did that because I like to use this, um, this is just heavy card uh, chipboard. And what it does is it gives a little bit nicer radius. Even though this is 50-52 and can handle a pretty sharp uh, bend, uh, this just makes it come out a little nicer. What I do is I put this in for a shim until I get it clamped. Then I stick my pieces of cardboard under here. Make sure it's pulled up nice and tight against the uh, the two pieces, these two, uh, the shim and the the parallel here, and then I clamp it. It makes it real tight on this, so I just pop this out, and then I go ahead and form it. This one I went ahead and taped up. The first one I was so excited to see if that dimple was going to work that I didn't bother, but this one I'll keep make pretty. Anyway, so there's one of them bent, and then uh, then I just do all of them, and it makes them come out really nice and uniform that way. Just 
just got to make sure it's nice and snug before you cinch it down. Just to all three of them. I could actually have this trimmed back a little bit. Do the last one. There we go. So, got all three of them nicely formed, and uh, they should come out dead nuts on every one of them because they're exactly the same and just like on the last one they they it worked really nice up against the uh, set this on the uh, precision granite surface and uh, it's uh, right on the money so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll do a dimple on here well here we are over at the dimpling station and this is that die set that I got. This is one of the biggest I think they make. It's a quarter inch and it's really not made for heavy gauge like this 0.1. This is 0.1 5052 aluminum sheet and it's not designed for that. Maybe the thickest this thing would really be designed for is maybe a 16th inch, 60 thousandths. But um, I'll tell you what, it works pretty awesome. I'll go ahead and put it in my pneumatic squeeze and see I know a lot of you guys won't have a pneumatic squeeze but a set like this could be cut uh, this could do this uh, shank could be cut off of both of these pieces and just just used just set in and uh, used this way uh, in a vise. Got to grab my air hose. So guys, in conclusion here, it looks like the uh, dimples for these um, end effectors is really going to work out great. Um, another idea that I had is I had a secondary plate on the machine right now. It's a plate that mounted to these uh, three holes on the end effector plate and had uh, this aluminum collar that was from McMaster Car mounted to that. In an effort to um, minimize the uh, part count, I had the idea of just deleting that uh, secondary plate altogether in which case I would make up some with uh, some of these with just a three quarter inch hole and uh, three small uh, mounting holes uh, to mount this directly to the end effector plate 
So again, it would minimize uh, minimize parts, make it even lighter, which is always good. And uh, that's something that, to think about. One other thing that I did is uh, the other day I ordered up a couple of these, um, these J-heads. My extruders actually worked awesome, both with uh, ABS and uh, PLA. I'm actually doing a PLA print right now. This is that, um, on Thingiverse, you've seen the, um, the heck is this? A tiki. It's a tiki guy. <laughs> so anyways, it's going to be pretty tall, um, but it's looking pretty cool. So um, I bought a couple of these J-head um, uh, extruders uh, or hot ends, and I want to do some playing around with it. My idea is that, I mean, these are pretty inexpensive, like just a little over 50 bucks, I think. Um, but what my idea is, is that I could go ahead and machine up an aluminum, like you see my uh, center, um, my barrel right there. Basically I would just do an extension off of the J-head right here with aluminum. So the aluminum would come down just past uh, the, the groove, the main groove like this, would mount in there. This is three quarters of an inch which fits the, uh, which fits the collar quite nicely. So. You know, the idea is that I would still have the adjustability. There's a couple of ways that this could be done. I think the easiest way, I would just make it out of solid and then machine um, the inside of this to fit over the J-head. Just mount it with a couple set screws. And then I would just bore um, a hole through it. It would only end up being maybe two inches long or so. Um, and just bore a uh, uh, 1.75 um, millimeter hole through it. That way I could, at the top of it, I could just go ahead and install the, um, uh, the tube fitting uh, up here. And uh, that would still give me adjustability in the height. I really like that. It makes it so easy. You just throw the end on, bring it to zero, drop the set screw, let it uh, go to the table, and uh, you're done. So um, anyways, yeah, that's something else to give some, another idea to give some thought to. I think it would work pretty good. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them either in the forum or, um, actually the forum's the best place. Um, and thanks a lot for all the interest. Happy printing. <laughs>